Hello students, welcome back to the course on Organizational Behavior, Individual Dynamics in Organization. Today we move to the last lecture of Module 5, where we look into assessing personality, caveats and concerns. So we have looked into personality in detail. We have also looked into some of the tests which we generally carry out to understand or measure or assess the personality. But what are the problems associated with that? What are the concerns associated with that? Let's understand in this lecture. I'm Dr. Abraham Sir Isaac. I'm an assistant professor at the School of Business, Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati. So let's start with today's theme. There is an increased acceptance of personality assessment in forensic settings. Initially, if we look into, and that is the broad theme of today's lecture, we had seen that people are not very keen in understanding and assessing personality because what is the need to assess something if you are not making use of that. So basic tenet being assessment of something is only useful if that particular element or particular factor is employed somewhere or is uh, useful somewhere. So on that note, we'll understand what you mean by assessing personality. Personality is clearly an important concept, no doubt about it, for understanding predicting and changing behavior in organizational setting. Let's understand this word by word. Understanding what you are, how much you perform, or what is your uh, predisposition in things what does not concern you, or how you are with respect to your surroundings, how you are able to control your emotions, all these aspects come under understanding. Predicting how you are able to understand the changing environment and what you can do about changing or adapting to that changing environment that comes under predicting. And changing behavior is with the proper understanding and prediction that you have with you at your disposition, what you are going to do about in terms of changing the behavior in organizational settings. So this is what personality is relevant for or important for. One concern is that most tests are self-report scales which allow the applicants or employees to fake their answers. Now we had a great detailed study on this particular topic. Why we go for self-report, we try to dissect the relevance of self-report studies. We also try to understand what are the weaknesses associated with self-report. Please uh, refer back to lecture 1, 2 of personality module 5. So when we looked into all those aspects, finally we also concluded that self-report test or self-report assessment has their own benefits. They are uh, the go-to instruments because of some reasons. A second issue pertaining to personality assessment is that it's a relatively weak predictor of a person's performance. We tried to understand there are some critical elements or critical traits in the previous lecture that ultimately becomes important in the organization. But having said that, we should not undermine the relevance of the context. Let's take this as an example and understand it with greater detail. You are an open personality person. You are open to experience. You are always trying to learn, always meticulous in your dealings, and always try to expand your horizon in terms of your understanding of the particular uh, work you are doing or the entire organization as such. But that said, you find that the organization is not that supportive. Find that the co-workers are not that supportive. They are always skeptical about you. They are always uh, doubtful about your actions or your uh, inactions. They are always concerned about your next step. So all these aspects categorically establish one thing that is the context. So whatever your personality is, whatever your personality you assess and you find out and that would be, let's assume for the, for the fact, as a hypothetical case, let that personality be correct also, but still the context may redefine what you are based on the required uh, situations or scenarios emerging or evolving in the organization. I repeat, we cannot undermine the context even if we have ascertained the personality. So this makes essentially 
personality as a weak predictor of performance. Let's look into another example here. You are a person who is very driven, who is very open, who is very hardworking, but there is something, let's say, you are having, let's say, some physiological issues which is not making you to do or focus on things, or you are entwined with some other issues, or there are some other problems that are running in the back of your mind, which is not allowing you to fully concentrate on the matter in hand. So all these aspects certainly takes a hit on your performance. And hence, we can say that personality is a weak predictor of performance. So when we actually state that we have to understand whatever be the personality traits, whatever be the personality, whatever be the assessed personality of that particular individual, he or she might not perform in the prescribed manner because of certain extraneous variables. Sometimes it could be the context, sometimes it could be some other extraneous factors which are beyond the comprehension of an organization. So always the underlying factor is though personality is important, personality could be, personality could be a relatively weak predictor of person's performance. Now let's understand this assessment scenario as the urge to assess personality over different centuries line by line. The first is 19th century precursors to personality assessment. In the 19th century specifically, there were several notable attempts based on scientific thinking of the day. If you recollect the, the initial lectures of this course, you will understand how even OBM was influenced, OB and OBM, organizational behavior management was influenced by the scientific thinking of day. The scientific temperament started building during that time and how it had influenced different uh, disciplines and not to forget that personality assessment was also under the realm of the scientific thinking of the day to develop formal methods for studying personality and character. So two separate and quite different historic trends emerged and one such intellectual movement was phrenology. If you look into phrenology is the view that there was a means of deriving information about the character of individuals by examining their head size and shape. Now this is quite amusing when we look into uh, this in 2024. But remember 19th century precursor, 19th century people started analyzing understanding personality and one of the first documented aspect was phrenology that you know it looks funny it looks amusing but even the head size and shape could actually tell the personality of an individual so this was the initial thought now the second thought or second school of approach came in during the 19th century itself which was by francis galton we'll discuss in detail about Galton in the coming slides, involved careful scientific observation and mental testing. Galton's ideas were highly influential to later personality assessment development. So, so initial thought was more heuristic. They, they tried to understand personality with respect to the head size and shape. But the second approach, especially by Francis Galton, was more scientific, based on scientific observation and mental testing, and it had a serious impact on the personality assessment developments that came in later part of the 19th century. Now, in contrast to the pseudo-scientific phrenology, which I have already mentioned, in the early 19th century, there were major contributions to the development of a science of personality assessment towards the end of the century. So this is where more than just the spirit of science, the, the development of scientific temperament came into picture. And if you look into Francis Galton's work, his work was phenomenal in having a scientific temperament. He was a relative and contemporary of Charles Darwin, if you know, because there were few such individuals who were actually related and very high, highly intellectually capable like Galton, Darwin, Shakespeare, etc. Conducted a number of experiments on mental processes and postulated procedures for measuring psychological attributes. Galton thought that human character 
this is the the starting point of personality human character could be studied by observation and experimentation and suggested strategies for making personality based observations that could be standardized and compared by the use of normative procedures so if you look into the scientific approach this is the beginning of science in personality assessment rather than making absurd pseudo scientific statements or conclusions or observations galton was more of the view or his attempt was more inclined or channelized to make something standardized irrespective of the cultural context you are irrespective of any other context for that matter you are you are actually giving those tests it could give the reliable results the consistency and the internal consistency matter to him because of the scientific temperament because of the normative procedures he followed so galton proposed that questionnaires could be developed for measuring mental traits although he did not develop a specific questionnaire for this purpose so this is where we have to understand how earlier early 20th century developments has has taken place and what is the background for those early 20th century developments and we have to understand and appreciate the role of francis galton for that matter so when we look into early 20th century developments in personality assessment specifically we see that benjamin 2005 pointed out that psychological assessment was the beginning of clinical psychology so if we are to a certain the field of clinical psychology or the relevance of clinical psychology as such we have to appreciate the importance of psychological assessment or the contribution of psychological assessment cannot be missed the first formal use of a questionnaire to study personal qualities involved the use of structured rating scale for studying the human character again we have not come to personality as such but we are looking into the human character other early efforts to evaluate personality can be found in the work of carl jung which we'll discuss in the future lectures now when we look into the scale the questionnaire was converted to scale standardized the woodsworth the scale the woodsworth personal data sheet pds included 116 items related to physical problems social behavior mental health symptoms that were thought to address the person's psychological adjustments so basically when we look into the 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 factors which have emerged as the items in the particular scale they ought to measure the physical problems the behavior in in general in social and the mental health symptoms were also gauged with respect to the the questionnaire the scoring on the scale was the total number of problem items that the individual acknowledged were an indication of adjustment problem so we are actually looking into the human character in greater detail how the human character has evolved with respect to the adjustment and the problems associated with the adjustments many of the actual item contents devised by woodworth found their way into inventories in use today so all these personality inventories has certain Uh, precursors or has certain reminiscence in in the early 20th century developments in personality assessment a plethora of clinical personality assessment procedures were explored and developed during the the latter half of the 20th century ranging from structured interviews to behavioral assessment instruments to projective tests so if you see the gradation the improvement was from structured interview to behavior assessment and finally to projective test so psychological we have we have uh, elaborated on on the difference between self report test and there we have also looked into projective test and different types of projective test now this is where we currently stand in terms of the development of personality personality assessments personality tests etc psychological tests have become a respected and engaging task for the clinical practitioners of today with diverse applications and these diverse applications range from recruitment selection towards understanding the workforce training to have a better uh, say in the organization decision making 
to have an important role in the organization, career progression. So all these aspects are intertwined, are interconnected, are related with personality. And this is ascertained by personality test. And this is the development of the personality test we are acknowledging and we are appreciating. There is an increased acceptance of personality assessment even in forensic settings. So this is the theme of our, our uh, lecture today as evidence in code. So moreover, psychological assessment is widely accepted in industrial applications. So this is what makes uh, the personality assessment very critical. Now initially we had just a curiosity to understand the personality of an individual which led to certain uh, heuristics or certain the rules of thumb, how the head shape and structure or how the structure in general define the personality of an individual. Later standardized tests were generated, but that was more to understand the person all together. But later part or presently in the current context, personality tests have gone beyond that. People are using it for forensic settings, for evidence in court. Moreover, psychological assessment has great industrial applications, as I already mentioned, not only with respect to the uh, manpower planning, but also with respect to what individuals want to do in an organization. So it is not just to understand how much forecast, how much people or how many people you want in your organization, it has, it has gone beyond that. The understanding is to, to understand the real need or the need for motivation or the need for development within the organization that also can be deciphered, that also can be understood from the personality assessment. So this is what makes the personality and personality assessment all the more relevant. I'd just like to conclude this module of personality. We have discussed personality in detail. We have understood different types of theories that were associated with personality. We have also tried to understand and acknowledge and appreciate the evolving research literature in personality. We have also looked into some of the critical personality tests, personality assessment, what were the, uh, the evolution or what were the, uh, the ways or the track, we try and tend to track the emergence or the evolution of personality assessment, how it moved from a mere uh, heuristic approach to more scientific and more of uh, uh, you know reliable and valid measures which are even used in forensic settings and as evidences of court. But that said, personality tests are not the full and final verdict you should take. Because as I mentioned in some of the lectures, there is one important thing which we should not forget and that is the context. What your personality is, you might behave accordingly. What your personality is, you might tend to respond in situations accordingly. What your personality is, you might take decisions accordingly. But the context is important. You might perform in a different way. You might act in a different way. You might take a decision in a different way. It all depends on what scenario you are. You are in a pressure from your boss. You might take a diff different decision. You might, uh, you know, look into social desirability by a coworker. You might do a different act altogether. You might be uh, uh, trying to get appreciation and acknowledgement from your, your subordinate. You might perform in a different way. So your performance, your act, your decision, everything cannot be totally related to personality. There is the importance of context. There is the existence of context which can have, which can modify, which can change your personality to a certain extent or which can at least have an effect on the behavior you, you, take, it, you take out because of your personality in the particular context or in the particular organization. Thank you for listening to me patiently. We'll come out with a, with a different module and different lecture in the next class. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.